speaking and only and not to speak or participate. Uh, can I please remind you all to switch your phones to uh, silent for the duration of this meeting in case you are speaking and obviously phone sounds over the meeting. In addition, can I refer you to the protocols for remote meetings which have been previously circulated? Um, I think we've, we've done it for the last few meetings. You all should be aware your microphone should be switched to mute unless you're speaking. And I say the Democratic Service Officer will take a roll call to start this meeting of all members and officers. And I should say, um, if you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either by the chat function, which you had explained to you at the start of the other meeting, or by raising your electronic hand um, via Teams? And I say before this meeting starts, I'll assume that you've all read the paperwork, uh, which you had been circulated. And I say, um, when asking a question, can also refer to the page number, uh, inspect the question. Um, first item on the agenda is to do a roll call. I'm Councillor Mike Harvey, the Chair, and I am present. I now will call on Democratic Services Officer to take a, take a roll call. Charlotte, please. Yes, Chair. Um, Councillor Rahman's just struggling to get into the meeting, so I'll, I'll help him in a bit now, but he, he will be present. Um, and then if I move on, so Councillor Sharon Freegard. Present. Councillor Nigel Hunt. Councillor Nigel Hunt. No. Uh, Councillor Steve Hunt. I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Simon Noyle. No. Councillor Alan Llewellyn. Councillor Llewellyn. Are you here? I think he's looped in, Charlotte. You can see his face on the screen. Yeah. Councillor Sandra Miller. Yeah. I've had apologies from Councillor Mason. Councillor Del Morgan. Present all. Present. I've also had apologies from Suzanne Padson. Councillor Lynette Purcell. Present. Councillor Sheila Penry. Present. Councillor Sonia Reynolds. Present. Councillor Arwin Wilcock. Present, Chair. Yeah. And then Councillor Rob Jones. Yes, present. Councillor Carol Clement Williams. Present. Councillor Doreen Jones. Present. Councillor Edward Latham. Present. Councillor Alan Lockyer. Present. Councillor Peter Rees. Present. I've had apologies from Councillor Peter Richards. Councillor Annette Wingrave. Present. Councillor Leanne Jones. Present. And I'll just move on to officers now. Stephen Phillips. Present. Karen Jones. Present. Alid Evans. Present. Andrew Jarrett. Present. Howell Jenkins. Present. I've had apologies from Nicola P.S. and Hugh Jones. Craig Griffiths. Present. Karen Furlow. Present. Andrew Thomas. Kerry Morris. No. Nope. I've also had apologies from uh, Mike Roberts. Dave Gr Griffiths. Present. Spencer Blewett. Present. Simon Brennan. Rian Heaton. Present. Stacey Curran. Present. Tammy Davis. Present. And Chloe Plowman. Present. That's all that I've got, Chair. Have I missed anyone out at all? No, I, I, in the, the chat, I see Councillor Nigel Hunt is here and also Saif Rahman is uh, in the meeting now. There we are. Thank you, Chair. 
OK, thanks for that. The second item uh, on the agenda is declarations of interest. Uh, does anybody have a declaration of interest, please? Uh, Chair, it's Sonia Reynolds here. I've got a, a declaration of interest against agenda item six, if we're covering it as as the uh, voluntary acting manager and trustee of Carnarvon Mardi mentioned in the report. OK, thanks for that. Any other declarations of interest? No, I don't see any. Item three uh, on the agenda is uh, pre-decision scrutiny. Um, at yesterday's meeting it was agreed that we would only scrutinise items five, six, seven on the cabinet papers. So if everybody's happy uh, with that, I'll go to item five, which is the Welsh Language Standards Annual Report. I see um, uh, presenting this is Rian Heaton and uh, Karen Jones. If the officers haven't got anything else to add to the report, as is normal, we go straight to questions. And first question I've got is from Councillor Del Morgan, please. Uh, hello, uh, thank you very much. Uh, just on the bottom of page 55, uh, in fact, the the, um, the report itself mentions in a number of places the Welsh language officer group uh, and at the bottom of page 55 there's a reference to the work uh, that they're planning to do over the next 12 months. Um, can I first of all j just as an aside mention looking at the table of statistics we've been given of, of our staff how pleased I am to see that the number of uh, staff who have put themselves down for Welsh learning uh, seems to be increasing uh, somewhat so I'm very pleased to see that. Uh, that that's very useful. Um, in terms of the Welsh Language Officer Group, uh, I just wanted to check whether the um, you know the recent emergency and and staff being redeployed and all the rest of it uh, will be having an impact on uh, on the work that that had been projected for next year. Uh, I gather the Welsh Language Officer Group is going to carry on working, but I just wanted to make sure that, um, that the planned. Um, items that they've got and, and there's reference there at the bottom of page 55 uh, are still uh, on target or whether we, we are going to be, uh, if you like, redrafting the, the plans as a result of the last few months. Okay, I can see um, Mrs Furlow has got a hand up you answering this, Karen. Yes, Chair, I can take uh, Councillor Morgan's question. Yes, Councillor Morgan, you're correct. Um, the Welsh Language Officers Group was due to meet in April. And that was the next scheduled meeting and obviously that didn't go ahead due to the lockdown and as you said some of the, the officers involved in that group were redeployed um, in response you know helping the council's response the immediate response to the pandemic so that included Rianne Heaton um, who facilitates the Welsh language officers group Rianne herself was redeployed to safe and well scheme but Rianne has now returned um, to a substantive post in the last couple of weeks so the plan is for the group to get together in September and um, Rian has informed me that on that agenda, they will be looking at items such as the mystery shopper exercise that was undertaken by Mentor Iaith. They're going to be looking at the outcomes from that review. They're also going to be looking at the evaluations of the training our accountable managers received back in February, March from Mentor Iaith. And as you said, they will be looking at their programme of work for the rest of the year and reprioritising in light of the delay now since the lockdown. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Thank uh, you. Yeah, you yes, yeah, th th thanks very much for that, uh, Karen. Yes, I understand uh, the situation. Um, just looking at the inconsistencies that were going to be targeted in, um, uh, you know, in the in the months ahead, uh, I'm sure they'll pick that up in due course when they, when they're able to. Uh, and once again, uh, my pleasure at seeing the number of uh, members of staff who have put themselves forward for uh, for Welsh learning, either internally within council or, or of course, uh, some of them outside. Thank you. <coughs> OK, thanks for that response. And the second question uh, we had indicated yesterday is from Councillor Alan Llewellyn, please. Yeah, thanks, th thanks, Chair. Um, on page 46, paragraph 6, the report refers to the COVID outbreak uh, affecting the ability to provide communications bilingual in this period. This has been raised with me by several people as well as the local community council. I, I know from discussions with Mrs. Karen Jones, the assistant chief executive, that this is now being addressed. And perhaps either Karen or, or Karen uh, could inform the committee of the progress that's that's been made. Thanks. Okay. 
Yes, sir. Okay, that's that question. Is there any other further questions, please? No further questions. Councillor Harvey, did Karen want to come in on that? Sorry, you got a hand up. Karen? Thank you, Chair. Just in response to Councillor Flewellen's query then, I hope in the last week you have seen a marked improvement. Um, since last Thursday, we have now started um, simultaneous publishing of our Welsh and English versions of our press releases. So seven have been issued since last Thursday. Similarly, with our social media accounts, we've resumed our own posts in both English and Welsh. Over the last week, there has been a delay between the two, but that should be um, resolved by this coming Friday, tomorrow. When we share a post from a third party, where that is available in English only, we will be adding an appropriate comment in Welsh on our Welsh accounts. And we are also monitoring our Welsh language accounts for messages. And where a message requires a response, we will respond in Welsh. And just to add, Councillor Llewellyn, we have, you will have seen our video that we've just recently produced, the MPT by Local, um, Welcome Back to Ponte Dewi. So that video um, featured both English and Welsh speaking shop owners. And what we did on that video was where the person was speaking in Welsh, we subtitled into English. And where the person was speaking into English, we subtitled in Welsh. A next key piece of work that we have initiated is at looking at our website. So it's our COVID-19 um, pages on our website. An audit has started, so that audit will remove all the information now that's not relevant, and then we will start um, translating the information that needs to remain on there. Thank you, Chair. Are you happy with that, Councillor Freeman? Thank you very much for that update. That's very helpful, Gerald. Okay, the same. My signal is starting to go a bit on my computer, so I apologise for that. Um, any further questions on this item, please? No, I can't see any. Okay, in respect of that, the recommendations on page 48 and this item is for monitoring only. Uh, the next item we decided to scrutinise at uh, pre-scrutiny yesterday was item 6, Neath Batalvet, safe and well. Um, unless officers got anything to add to the report, um, we go straight to questions. Uh, first question we got down is by Councillor Lynette Purcell, please. Thank you very much. Um, I've got several points. Um, would you like me to take them all at once or should I do them separately? You're muted, Chair. Sorry. Yeah, if you put them separately. Uh, yeah, put them separately, please. OK, brilliant. Will do. OK, the first one is just an observation and it's on page 67. It talks about the people who were eligible to support I've been concerned for some time that there is an omission here. I suggest it should include mental health patients, who are particularly those who have been referred to as who did not have an NHS shielding letter. I'd like assurances that that will be borne in mind should we have a second surge. Perhaps if we could respond to that one first. Thank you. Yeah, you see, uh, as you spoke, um, Mrs. Karen Jones put a hand up. Uh, Karen, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Just to give some reassurances to Councillor Purcell, um, there's two aspects, I suppose, that I'd want to comment on this morning. One is that as we're transitioning people who are currently receiving support from Safe and Well, where we've got concerns about the vulnerability of any of those individuals, we will be asking social services to come alongside us to make sure that as we take our support away, that we are connecting people into appropriate support going forward. So what I would say to members, Chair, if they've got individual people they're concerned about in their community, please flag those up to the community leads just to make sure that we are making sure we've got strong plans around those individuals as we move into the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the summer. In relation to the autumn and the prospect of there being a need for further support to be provided, we are looking at our contingency planning at the moment. So certainly in terms of the criteria, if there are people that members think that we've missed in there, we are happy to take that feedback on board and we will build that into our contingency plans for the autumn. Thank you. That's the reassurance I was looking for. Um, the second point on page 74 and also on page 105, it talks about the transfer of information to a successor. I'm talking here about volunteer coordinators. 
Can the assistant chief executive expand on this? For example, will it be a successor or several successors covering different areas as we had with the community leads? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. If I can come in on this, the volunteer coordinator is not intended to replace the community leads. I think it's important that I make that clear um, to begin with. What the volunteer coordinator is going to do is to relieve Jason Heaney, as you know, as our youth service manager, from the way in which he's been supporting the volunteers that we recruited over recent months. We've still got 200 active volunteers working within the Safe and Well Service. <coughs> we will need some of those people to continue into October, we think. And it's important that those volunteers get support when Jason is having to return to his normal duties. So the volunteer coordinator is going to come in to specifically um, support the volunteers we've currently got chair. And between now and October, we are looking to develop some proposals on the ongoing role of volunteers within the council. I will come back before members for you to consider in due course. As far as the community leads are concerned, as you know, we've been um, seeing people return to some of their substantive roles, but we've been trying to maintain cover out there in communities while this transition is taking place. We will be making sure that we've got a plan um, that you will be informed about and consulted about before the community leads are replaced with something else. And we'll be spending time during August as, aut as officers discussing the options around that because we have very much taken on board the feedback that came out of the member survey that that coordination at the community level is very much welcomed. It's a question of what it now needs to look like going forward. So we want to take some time to think about that during autumn. The member panel has set up a task group and a workshop in September where hopefully we'll have some clear recommendations coming forward in early September that will give members assurance around that particular aspect. Thank you. With your indulgence, Chair, I have got two more. Is that OK? Yes, certainly fine. Right, OK. Um, the food delivery service on page 82 it refers to the delivery service being paused on August the 16th. I'm interested in the use of the word paused. Does that imply that we expect it to be resumed? And is council planning for such an eventuality? The short answer, uh, Councillor Purcell, on that is yes. What the Chief Medical Officer is saying is that the infection rates at the moment are low enough to give him confidence that some of the restrictions that people who are shielding have been asked to comply with can be eased in August. But as we have seen up in Oldham and in other parts of the UK, people who are shielding have been asked to reintroduce some of those restrictions on their daily lives when mm. infections have risen in those localities. So uh, I think the Welsh Government has deliberately used the word paused rather than stopped. Because as Andrew had said in the previous meeting, we are still in the middle of this pandemic. It has not gone away. Now, in terms of our food service, particularly, the government are saying at the moment that they have no current plans to reintroduce a free national food delivery service. So clearly you can see from that that we need to be making some concrete plans at the local level to support people who may, may be asked to put themselves under further restrictions if there is a small outbreak or a larger outbreak into the autumn. And I'd just like to assure members this morning that we have already started developing our thinking around that. And we hope by the end of August that those contingency plans for different scenarios will have been worked up. We met yesterday and had a good discussion about the types of scenarios we think we need to plan for from um, an individual on the one hand being asked to quarantine for a period of time to groups of people being asked to quarantine or for a wider lockdown. And I think the leader of council mentioned earlier that he's asked the Welsh government for early clarity on when different triggers may actually put us into a, a different scale of response. So I think in summary, Chair, that we will need to make sure that we've got contingency plans for people who've been identified as in this medically vulnerable category, but I think the nature of the council's response is going to need to look quite different in the autumn. And of course, we need to bring into the 
the the thinking the fact that our local shops for example are now in a different place to what they would have been in march to provide support for some of those individuals so we will um uh, have those contingency plans worked up as i say by the end of august okay, thank you very much sorry sorry chair um should i go on to my last one yes please Thank, and can I just thank Karen for that? Because the benefit of hindsight, there's so much that could be planned now in a better way, having learned from the experiences of the last few months. The final one is quite simple. Appendix four, um, it has various sections going well and it has action sections. On page 102 in the going well section, it refers to what we as um, councillors have all witnessed this fact that staff have been empowered because the command and control approach has been removed and there's been a lot of creative thinking, a lot of thinking outside the box taking place. But what I was concerned about is that whereas in the going well section, it refers to removing the command and control approach, that's not repeated in the action section. So I just wanted to check, is this just an omission or are we intending to take action on this and to continue this empowering of staff? Um, sorry. I think you might be Sorry, yes, I think I, my buttons are being a bit delayed, I think. <laughs> um, yes, thank you for that. It was an omission when I checked back at what I'd actually written in the table. What my plan is, is to take those lessons learned that we've drawn out in the report and provide a more detailed action plan, Councillor Purcell, against all the elements in there. And I think they fall into two broad categories. The things that we need to take action on now, because it needs to inform our plans for the autumn and the prospect of there being a rise in infections, but also as well, those longer term changes that we want to take forward. And particularly, I think that one that you've highlighted there is very important in terms of how we develop the culture of the council going forward. So you will see me providing a much more detailed action plan against all those lessons learned. And I will say as well that we are still taking on board feedback. So it hasn't been a job and finish, if you like, on in terms of lessons learned. We're continuing to seek feedback. And I'm sure by the autumn, there'll be a bit more learning as well that we'll want to build into our forward planning. OK, thank you very much indeed for that. And thank you, Chair, for your indulgence. No problem at all. Thanks. Um, next question we have is from Councillor Sharon Freegard, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, on page 105, uh, I'd like to know, have we decided yet how we're going to use the LACs in the action there? I just wondered um, if what we'd learned, you decided how you were going to deploy them. Uh, who's answering that? If I come in initially, uh, Chair, and I'm sure um, Andrew will probably want to say something as well. Um, we clearly have had feedback from um, most members of council that having uh, that coordination at the local area level has been really important. Um, and I think there's been a brief discussion about the role of the LACs in the member panel as well. Um, we've met as officers recently to look at um, what the proposals may look like in terms of the local area coordinators going forward. We've got further discussions planned um, this month. And what we are looking to do is to bring some discussion into the member panel and that workshop that I mentioned, that the deputy leader set up for September, so we can look at what the role of the local area coordinator local area coordinators might be going forward but also about where the wider council's effort is around community development as well and i know that that's a piece of work the members are particularly keen that we take forward so what i want to just reassure uh, council free guard is that the developments of the thinking around the local area coordinators will not be taking place in isolation of what we've learned through safe and well and what members have said they want to do around having a broader discussion about community development going forward. So that's the kind of general picture, Chair, but I'm sure Andrew will come in and say something specifically about uh, the local area coordinators. Yeah, you can see Mr Jarrett's got his hand up. Mr Jarrett, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So it's so I made the decision right at the beginning of the pandemic uh, when we were expecting the, the things which I described at the last meeting. 
um, to pull out the local area coordinators. Ostensibly, what they were going to do was to manage discharges from the field hospitals, uh, and of course, that didn't that 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 wasn't necessarily in the in the end. I mean, from my point of view, I'm clear that we do need a local area coordinator function uh, going forward. I think we've got to. To put the lessons learned through safe and well, uh, the lessons that we learned about having local area coordination together um, and then come up with a, a plan uh, and we'll do that, um, you know, in collaboration with you as members. I'm happy to do that. OK, thanks. Uh, uh, Councillor Frieger, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I would just like to make another comment um, regarding the local area, the other area coordinators that were established, how well they worked and how well the Safe and Well initiative worked as well. And that's a credit to the council because I know that uh, CBS came in quite late on there, but I think that the council need to take a lot more credit than we have within the report about how that was implemented. But also to mention how well uh, Age Cymru West Glamorgan and Age Connect worked prior to Safe and Well coming in and during that time as well, because it took a number of referrals that perhaps would have been added on to our, to our list. So I just wanted to compliment you on that. OK, thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. And I can see Councillor Carol Clement Williams got a hand up. Yeah, um, just, uh, Sharon's just um, put a, an idea into my head, just to add to what she had to say, that in Neath Port Talbot side, um, Radar um, is a local charity in Port Talbot and they've done a marvellous job. Um, they've also been doing prescriptions and shopping and, and all that other things, uh, all those other things. So um, I know that I've been in a meeting um, with um, other uh, authorities throughout the UK and uh, we did a meeting with SIPFA and a lot of the uh, response coming from uh, those people is that we will we have relied um, on, on and we will need to rely on our third sector partners um, you know coming out of all this uh, well as we always do um, but maybe we need to, um, you know, just see what their capacity actually is and whether what they are providing is what we actually need. But I just wanted to recognise Radar for the marvellous work they've been doing. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that. Um, Councillor Penry, I saw your hand go up. Was that an error or did you want to, to come in? Sorry, Sheila, you moved it. Yeah, you, you still yeah, moved it. Yes. OK, sorry, can you unmute? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, no, I can. Go ahead. Thank no, you. No, I did. It's all right. Everything was answered, what I was going to ask. OK, thanks for that. Um, I say I see no indication, no other indications to ask questions. I think on this um, safe and well topic, the work has been carried out by the council staff, by the volunteers. I know in my area, the Salvation Ar Army has been incredible. And where would people living at home who were isolated and have been during this period? So I say I'd like to thank everybody, you know, for their efforts and just pray we don't get a second wave. But I think uh, if we do, we're far more prepared looking at people isolating in the community, you know, through what we've done. I see Councillor Doreen Jones just put a hand up. Uh, Councillor Jones, please. Yeah, well, one of the things that I, I, I think that we need to be aware of after this is all finished is um, the aftermath, because I think a lot of people are going to be afraid of going out and I think that's going to be a big problem is the isolation that people have got used to. You know, particularly the older generation, like myself, I keep escaping when my son's not looking. But um, it, it is it is going to be more difficult. You know, people have got so used to being in the little corners now. And and one other thing I'd like to say as well, I think we all what we've got here, and I've said this many times with Karen, what we've got here, yes, it's great that we've all all rallied round. But I think the main rallying round is 
probably people are speaking to each other on streets that they never they've never bothered with before. And I think that's that's something positive that's going to come out of it, that people are making more being aware of one another and being aware of who is on the street now. I know there's some one street up the at the village with me and Kilifrew. We're still having the bingo every two weeks in an afternoon, you know. So there's there's a lot of positives that have come out of this that uh, that we can look forward to. But I think it's the isolation, I think, and that's something that we need to be aware of afterwards. That's all. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for those points, Lee Valley. Mrs. Jones, do you want to pass comment on this? Just to say, Chair, that um, we rang, um, I think you've got the appendix with the report, about 1,500 people from memory um, who hadn't contacted Safe and Well and who had been yeah. asked to shield. Um, and I think what was good about the feedback was the fact that people did confirm they had support. There were tiny numbers um, that we became involved in as a result of the phone calls. But I think just picking up on what Councillor Jones has said there, what was really evident from the call as well is how welcome the calls were. And what the staff said was it was taking a lot longer to work through the telephone call list because of the length of time that people wanted to speak to someone. So I think that is something that we're going to have to turn our minds to. I'm sure none of us want to be developing solutions and make people dependent on council services. But I think that work that the members have started to look at how communities can support people who are in that position is going to be very important. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, as we work through that process, what sort of ideas that we think that we can move forward with. And of course, you know, we need to be making sure we're listening to the community around that as well. OK, thanks for that. And I can see Councillor Reynolds, uh, you want to come in? Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just I was going to say the same sort of thing as 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 Doreen. Basically, we are already seeing that anxiety uh, amongst members of the community looking to come out and know that there is a befriending and support function to carry on with. But also just to be clear for anybody in, in, involved in this, as as we as I'm sure most of us all know, this is not over, that there are still support needs out there, that we still have people who cannot get transport to get to shops, to collect medications, to deal with issues, and that there is still a need that has to be met, even though we're moving out of lockdown and many people can move around. And those who can afford and take the amount that comes from online delivery uh, can receive those now much more easily. Yeah, thanks for the comments, I agree. Um, I can see no other questions uh, down. So in respect to this item, it is for noting. And then the next item is item seven, the re recovery strategy. Um, saying unless officers want to make any comments in respect to this, we again, as is normal, we go straight to questions. And the first question up is from Councillor Alan Llewellyn, please. <coughs> Sorry, Dr. Lair, thanks, thanks, Chair. As the executive summary says, the draft's been considered by all the subject scrutiny committees uh, and the members' panel, so I don't want to go um, over the contents in detail. Uh, I'd like to say I appreciate the work that has gone into preparing the recovery strategy and also, also reflects the hard work and the commitment and flexibility of our, of our workforce. Um, so I'm happy to support the conclusions about the period of stabilisation that's in front of us, uh, but we also need to lay the groundwork for future working. And this is important as the council is both a major employer and a major provider of services across all communities. And if we adopt good practice and innovation, Hopefully, we can influence other sectors and Welsh Government too, uh, and UK Government for that matter. Um, we do need to achieve balance between remote working. That's been referred to today already. Uh, we've all got more used to it, and attending uh, the balance between the remote working and attending council offices and meetings. It's certainly possible to reduce a lot of unnecessary travel, save time, and local congestion and air pollution. But we also have to be mindful of the isolation and limitations of remote communication, um, including some of our technical glitches, um, you know, as well as the social and economic impacts. 
So many environmental factors have become obvious during lockdown and the concept of a Green New Deal must be integral to economic rebuilding uh, on a local and national level. We know we've recently started the review period of our local development plan and we, we need to reappraise the balance between developments in the towns, the M4 corridor and the valleys where the increased experience of using technology will be essential. So linked to that and, and following on from the previous discussion, the importance of communities has been amplified. Neighbourliness and voluntary action has been key. Local shops have kept going throughout it all. And small businesses will be the economic bedrock, particularly of our valleys and town centres. So these communities need to be valued and supported. And I hope you'll consider all of these issues when we take the strategy forward to future phases. So finally, this, this period has clearly demonstrated the value of local government itself. The essential services provided by councils across the country and the crucial role of our workforce in keeping those services going. Local authorities have experienced years of austerity and cuts, and we need to ensure that it's understood by governments at all levels that it's time for proper investment in public services to maintain capacity and resilience for the future. Uh, thanks, Chair. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, who's answering this, please? Mrs. Jones? Uh, who's answering this? Karen, please. <laughs> and it's not working. Yeah, no, it is. Can you hear me now, Chair? Yes, I can. Sorry, uh, there's obviously a delay with the technology. Um, I'm not sure that uh, Councillor Llewellyn wanted me to address the point specifically, but just really to say um, in terms of process, Chair, the reason why Council established the member panel was to give this type of advice to the Cabinet as we work up the longer term recovery plans. So what you've got before you today is this stabilisation period where we are restarting services within the restrictions that the government is still laying in place. And obviously making sure as we get into the autumn period that the test trace protect arrangements locally and regionally are going to be fit for purpose. So there will be further recovery planning to do as we move forward. What this is doing is just giving us a picture of what's happened so far and where are we now. But I think those broader points that Councillor Llewellyn was um, raising there, the member panel is a good vehicle to use to start to, to develop that thinking. Thanks for that. Do you have your cancel crown, please? Yes, yeah, thanks very much, Chair. Okay, thanks. I'd like to see the leader put his hand up. Leader, you coming in here, please? Yeah, it was just to say that uh, uh, Council Twellen didn't actually make a question. It was more of a statement uh, for inclusion within the considerations uh, of the recovery process going forward. Uh, and these have been raised in the panel uh, and will be taken on board as we move forward. OK, thanks for that. I can see Councillor Sonia Reynolds got a hand up, please. Sorry, just didn't put it down. OK, thanks for that. And then um, in pre-scrutiny yesterday, um, Councillor Steve Hunt um, came up with a question. Councillor Hunt, please. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. I'll try and be as brief as possible. I, I won't repeat uh, Councillor Llewellyn's questions. Um, I didn't come in on MPT Safe and Well because it overlaps into this report. I certainly believe this is a fair reflection and a, a good report that I'll be supporting today. Um, I just want to put my uh, personal thanks to the way the MPT Safe and Well worked with the re redeployment and our uh, well, staff were up absolutely amazing in the diversity and some councillors who were volunteered as well. I just want to wear that. Um, what I was going to mention, uh, as Rob said, it's more of a, a statement to include, is that it's been touched on through Cara and others during this uh, cabinet briefing, uh, sorry, this cabinet uh, uh, meeting now, is that I think that there's not enough emphasis within the report on the, the work that the community champions, organisations, group, community councils, where they are, uh, CBS uh, and other partners, uh, played in the role. There's a lot of emphasis on how the councillors uh, have worked 
through the system, which is very commendable. But I mean, going forward, I think the, the community champions, street champions and so forth are going to be crucial. And I think within the report, I think there should be greater emphasis on that excellent work. Bearing in mind, they probably were started at least a week or two weeks before the council actually got their own processes together to start delivering. So these were at the forefront long before council and they should be recognised as such. So it's just a, a comment uh, that uh, many, many people within all our communities and councillors, I may add, have been hands on and they, you'll need them to be that way going forward as well. So it's, uh, it, it, I think they should be recognised more in, in reports, uh, in their own paragraph, in, in when you uh, pass these uh, documents to the Cabinet for approval. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I see Mrs Jones got a hand up, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, the report doesn't seek to evaluate the community response. Um, that is a piece of work that the member panel has actually agreed to undertake. Um, so we have commissioned an external researcher um, to learn from the community itself how um, they feel that the response has been mobilised, you know, what's been good about that. Um, and I think we are particularly all can, interested to understand how we enc can encourage that to continue. Because as Councillor Hunter said, not just for the purposes of COVID, but there are real opportunities here, aren't there, as Councillor Jones said earlier, to ensure the neighbours are supporting one another going forward. And I think, you know, the the, the response we've seen across the community is um, in Neath Patalba has absolutely been first class, um, you know, and members have got a lot as well to um, take pride in themselves because, you know, lots of members where they've not been shielded or where they've not had, um, you know, restrictions on their own um, activities have been out there right in the thick of, of, of all of that. I have said that in the report, Councillor Hunt, you know, so, so, you know, I did in putting it together, make it clear that we acknowledge that that has happened um, alongside what the council has done. But this report is specifically about what the council has been doing and is doing. And I think there'll be a further opportunity, Chair, for us to learn more and discuss more about the community response and the role of elected members as the panel completes that piece of work that it is now commissioned. OK, yeah, I agree with that. Councillor Land, are you happy with that? Yes, Chair, I, I welcome that uh, the way forward, Karen, and, and, and obviously we'll all be involved anyway, so thank, thank you for that response, Karen. OK, thanks. In respect of this, I can see uh, no other indications for any questions or anything. The recommendation in respect of this is on page 113, and it's uh, recommended that members approve the draft COVID-19 uh, moving forward, um, moving forward stabilisation the period between response and recovery strategy. Are we happy uh, to recommend that to Cabinet? A proposal, please. I move, Chair. Thank you. Seconder? Yes, Chair. OK, thanks for that. Going back to item six, um, the safe and well, I said it was for noting. I, I didn't point out that the recommendation on that was uh, on page 82. Uh, it's in three parts there for the um, noting and endorsing by the Cabinet. And also the third part there that is that the Cabinet remits the lessons learned from the work to the member panel established by the Council to inform recovery planning, seeking views as to where these lessons learned can be used to inform stabilisation and recovery planning. Are we happy for that to go to, to Cabinet as it is? Could I uh, Ooh, propose okay. a second? Could I second it, please? I second. I second. OK, thanks for that. Um, going back to the agenda, um, uh, items 8, 9 and 10 has decided uh, not to scrutinise those items and there were no urgent items. And then going back to this Cabinet scrutiny uh, papers, um, item 4, urgent items, there are none. So um, thanks for attending the meeting and it's been a long meeting and uh, enjoy the summer recess. So thank you for that and take care and stay safe.
Thank uh, you. Can I just remind uh, members and officers that you will need to leave this meeting and then uh, join the cabinet meeting as a separate invitation. Okay, fine. Thanks a lot. Okay.